Uh, well, one, I, I think they're uh, a really good team. Um, I think uh, Hector Herrera has been revolutionary this year for him. Uh, he controls the game on both sides of the ball, and uh, really the focal point for their attack is getting him on the ball and letting him dictate the game. And, you know, I, I think in, in the three games, just – Again, it's, it, it comes back to good defending, especially now that we're going on the road, is, is really minimizing the space centrally against a group that really likes to attract numbers centrally and then find their wide players. Um, and so that'll be the focus, you know, this week uh, in preparation. Um, you know, and I think we, 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 we created some decent opportunities here, here at home against them. And so, uh, you know, I think in, in transition moments would be the most opportune time to really hit them and they've been really good defensively as well they've done a really good job as a staff w with that team this year so for us it's going to take um you know everything that we've learned along the way but a really cohesive defensive performance with uh some some good attacking opportunities um I, that's all up in the air you know vera still hasn't trained with the team jay glad set out today um we're cautiously optimistic that both of them will be available um but uh, I'm not holding my breath because I've seen seen this thing happen too many times this year. So um, the good thing is, you know, the, 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 the guys have stepped up, you know, whoever steps in there for them. Um, I, I have no doubt will do a good job. But, it, you know, I think in, in this moment with, with the kind of pressure that will be on this game, you'd like to have guys that have been in the trenches before and, and experienced playoffs. Um, you know, Chicho is still – uh, you know, he's doing some running out in the field today. Uh, he's a lot further along than what we anticipated. Um, but, you know, the projection was that he wasn't be, wouldn't be available for the first round of the playoffs, and now that's looking like it's a possibility at some point. Um, so we're cautiously optimistic there. Um, and I think that's it. And then Holt is, would be great to have available uh, for, as a center back. But um, six months ago they gave him a November 1st date, and doctors are sticking to it. So... I think that's where we're at, but otherwise everyone else is good. So you've been in the league long enough to have experienced format changes in the playoffs. Um, here's another one, mm -hmm. three-game series in the first round. I'm curious what you, what you think about that. Yeah, no, I think it's a, a pretty cool format, and, and, and I think the uh, higher seed taking home, home field advantage I, I think is, is really neat. You know, I think, um, and we experienced it back in, in 2021 where, you know, we – upended Seattle um, and I think it favors really the underdog in the in the previous setup where I think this setup in a three game series uh, favors the home team you know and I think that's that's only fair given how long the season is and what you have to get to that spot although the West was incredibly tight this year and it could have gone either way but I think it'll be exciting uh, it'll be great to have a, a home game as well um, but again I think we're, we're gonna have to do our damage on the road but given the way our season looked this year is I feel comfortable going on the road and, and, and doing the job there. And the other interesting part of the setup is uh, going straight to PKs. So, um, you know, we'll be practicing those this week, and uh, it'll definitely provide um, some ex either exuberant moments or some very disappointing moments where you play for 90 minutes and it's a tie and then it goes straight to the PKs. But uh, I think that's probably the trickiest part of it. But otherwise, it's, I think it's a good setup. Do you know what the logic is between – you're only playing them once a week, so why go straight to PKs? It seems like guys could go overtime. Um, yeah, that's 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 a good question. I haven't really. I think it's just to keep um, injuries after a long season. You know, maybe the first overtime, the first 30 minutes won't be bad, but if you do that in three consecutive games, it might wear on the players. And then, given all the games that we've had with League's Cup and and how long the season's been, I think they're just looking out for the player safety. Got it. The um of experience you've had the last couple of years. You've also had a lot of roster turnover, so I'm curious how much of an impact you think that playoff experience, because you've played a lot of games on the road and you've had success, and even when you've lost, it's usually been tight. Yeah, no, that's, that's a good question. I, I think it's almost more important from, from a staff perspective and what we can portray to the guys, because there's been such turnover, of the importance of being using everything that, that we've come across this year, but the most important thing is really a mindset. Um, where we can go on the road and win. It, it's not like we have to, you know, defend by our goal to, to eke out a result. And, and I, I think it's really about conveying the message of 
of being disciplined, being organized, but taking our chances and taking our chances well. Um, and I think that because of the amount of turnover might be more valuable than having guys that have been in playoff experiences. Because again, guys like Vera um, ha haven't been in an MLS experience, but has had something like this in Colombia, along with Nelson and, and Andres. So I, I think the, the guys that have come into the group from abroad have experienced high pressure games. Um, but now it's just conveying what this league looks like, what the travel might look like, and how we must prepare a, a week in advance. The transition from the regular season to the playoffs happened so fast, but do you have a moment to take any satisfaction in a 50-point season? Mm, no. Nah. <laughs> it, it just never stops. And same thing when I was a player, you know, because you think you get to a World Cup and then uh, it's an amazing feat. And it's been a childhood dream of mine, and I never got to enjoy those moments because life continues going and there's no time, especially going from regular season to playoffs, to sit there and, you know, enjoy a quiet moment and go, God, you know, we did, we did a pretty good job as a group given all the different things that we had to endure. Um, right after the game, I was already thinking about what the plan for Houston was going to be in this week. So it, it's, it's, it's a tough existence, to be honest. I think you enjoy it when you're sitting on a rocker at 70 with your grandkids and telling them all the stories. But until then, you never get to enjoy the moments because they go by too fast. What do you think about the way that you guys played the last five, six games? Um, they were a little bit up and down. What impact do you think that's going to have kind of with the momentum going into this series with Houston? Um, yeah, I think... You know, I, I think, again, I think each game is its own event, and I think there's some, some really uh, positive things to draw from each game. Um, so, for example, the LAFC game, I thought it was one of our best collective defending performances and, and, and taking our chances on the road. And then the next game was against Kansas City, where we get a red card in 30 seconds. But the fight in the nine field players was incredible, right? And then we go to LA, where we're down two goals, and you could easily chuck that game away, but we find a way to fight back into that game to make it 2-2. And then going on the road to Colorado, a team that you know was, was, didn't have a lot to play for, but they're playing their last games, and we'd already beaten them three times. The guys, again, really rallied around finishing the season off on the right note. So I, I look at all those games differently, but the one common theme in all those games is, is the mentality in the group. And it doesn't matter if we're up, it doesn't matter if we're down, it doesn't matter if the game is drawn is the mindset is consistent. And I think that consistency can be parlayed into, in, into the playoffs. The technical stuff and, and the tactical adjustments, uh, those things will always wane from game to game. Um, but the one thing that's consistent, which is the most important, is the way we compete and the way we approach the game. You're working with guys <clears throat> on individual decisions in that all season long. It was, it was just a few seconds, but it felt like about two and a half weeks from the time that Diego Luna's challenging for the ball and the defender picks up the landing gear until he finally takes the shot. As he's walking in there and his time is slowing down, are you like, Diego, be selfish, go for goal. It's the right play. And how much confidence did you have that that's what he would do as opposed to laying the ball off? Yeah, no, I, to be fair, I, I, after he stole the ball, I kind of turned my back and I was just saying the same things to myself. It was like, just take this all the way in, you know? And um, then when I looked up, the ball hit the back of the net, right? So I was, I was in that same mindset and it, it is, really interesting you know because again I think we talk about development all the time we say how long does it take and for each player it's going to be different but I think when you when you're deliberate about your development right and Diego sitting out here shooting after every training session from angles that he's going to get in the games um, is an example of expediting that process um, and, and so I, I you know the, the 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 biggest thing for me with Diego was he was very proficient from box to box but lacked potency in that final third and in the last, you know, whatever it's been, five months, you've seen a click, a change, an understanding, uh, and the importance of him being brave and, and, and being a bit more selfish in those areas and, and, and carrying the team in the last two games. To back up even further on that goal and that whole process of, you know, you've spent two years as a group, you know, let's get left-footed players to play on the left side of the field because you say it opens the field up by 20 yards and let's play direct because nobody wants to turn around and face their goal. And so all these building blocks that you've been working, they, they all came together for the game-winning goal. And people say, well, it's one goal and it can be kind of a fluky sport. And it can be, right. except those three things were important. Yeah, I mean, again, I think if you, if you put defend, defenders under that type of pressure consistently, yeah, it might take two or three of those opportunities. But you're going to end up in a very favorable position facing the opponent's goal 
with a chance to score. So um, it's funny that you say that because in the video session, I made that exact point. We talked about in, in, in our structure is our outside central defenders, which was Bodie and Oviedo. If their outside back releases to our wing back, the ball isn't over the top. And, it, you know, not often does it work like that because it's not a game that you can pause or there's not a game where you can time out. Um, but it's stuff that you work on consistently and to have it show up in the last game for the goal that, that made the difference was, was it, it felt good from a coaching perspective. <laughs> um, Pablo, can you just talk a little bit about, you've been part of a million different teams from a million different angles, but the last couple games especially kind of struck me, the mix. Because you have Oviedo who's played 20 years as a pro in a lot of different leagues, Zach McNabb, and then you've got Diego and Omeka and Bodie and Gomez, right? So these guys are on opposite end of the age spectrum. But, you know, especially late in games, they're all just kind of finding a way to work together and get stuff done. Yeah, I think, I, again, I think uh, culture is so cliche. And you, what, what, what does that mean? And, and I think for, for me, it's, it's really about people and, and, and the processes that you incorporate from day one and you talk about a team environment and how does that rep what does that what does that mean team it means when you have all these games that you're rotating guys throughout the season in important fixtures whether they're open cup or league play um, and i think all that culminates into those guys coming into games whether it's late whether it's starting whether it's uh, next to an experienced guy or another young guy is a collective understanding of who we are as a group the way we want to approach this game and what my role and responsibility is as a player in this moment. Um, and, and those are things that we touch on every week. And so to see that collective understanding, because I think there's, there'd be a lot of teams that would struggle if they were missing two of their center backs and, and three of their uh, primary attacking players, you know, but for, for, but again, the way we've, I think, operated as a group affords younger players, affords older players, the opportunity to step in and make a difference and, and, you know, I'm, and that's what makes me proud is that we're a team and we play like a team and, and we fight like a team. How do you get guys to buy in every day? Again, I think it starts with the way we conduct ourselves as coaches, right? I, I think if, if in, 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 the, in the standards that we all hold, not, not just the coaches hold, but the players hold with themselves, and we don't have too many rules, right? We, I, we have two rules. One, be on time, and not because the coach wants it, it's because it's respectful of everyone that's, that's in the building. And, and two, give 100% every day. And those are non-negotiables. And those are the only two rules. And then once they start policing that part of it, everything else comes in, into place. But if you have a group that's committed to working hard every single day, then Saturday, you don't have to say, guys, today we have to work extremely hard. Because that is our MO. That's who we are. Um, and, and I think that's, um, and, and a lot of that has to do with the, the older guys. You know, guys like Demir Krylak, um, you know, Zach McMath, Justin Glad, who's been here for a long time, guys that, guys that have been, been there and done that and know what it takes. And so, um, you know, I think when, when, when the older players um, behave in the manner that we want everyone to behave, it becomes uh, quite simple to, to carry on a culture like that. And I guess, you know, from the outside, we all ride the roller coaster wins and losses and highlight moments, and, but it really kind of feels like those highs and lows have been evened out over the 45 games or whatever we've played over the last nine months. Yeah, uh, I, again, I, I think when I got into coaching, I was riding the roller coaster, and I was, I was, and and I think that's what players do. Um, and I noticed that as a player, the coaches that I had that rode the roller coaster never brought a sense of ease or process into the plan. It was always, it was almost like it was just pure luck, you know. And and if you lose a bet you're distraught because you don't know how to fix it you know and if you win you think you know everything right you think you've looked at the spread and you got all these things right and, and the truth is it, it's both of those you need luck but you have to have a process um, and so for me it was always we won what's the next opponent who's available how are we going to approach the game and if we lost it was the same thing it wasn't getting caught into this uh, end of the world feeling when you lost even if you lost three or four games on a spin it was always like we're right there i know what we have to do to fix that part of it um and then it's getting the guys to buy into what we have to fix and and again i think when when there's a collective uh, accountability as a group when we win and a collective accountability as a group when we lose 
it's much easier to get through those times. Um, I think when there's finger pointing, that starts with the coach. Uh, if there's finger pointing, then you'll never get through those times because you, because no one will want to take any accountability or accept responsibility for it. So last thing for me, so as we get to this point of the year, we're going back to Houston, a place where we had a, a tough outcome, you know, a couple months ago. Um, I think everybody thinks they're the hottest team in the league, but actually there's only four teams that finished the last five games hotter than we did. That may seem a little surprising, but I guess with all these, over the course of the year, you said it the other night, you used 31 guys, next man up kind of mentality. Now there's probably very few things that every guy hasn't seen yet. Right. right? So you have those moments you can kind of tap into experience. Yeah. No, I think, you know, uh, again, I think we have a good plan for Houston. Um, and it's really about – you know, what happens when the whistle starts, you know, and, and, and for me, all that starts and ends with this week in training and, and making sure that every session is competitive, every session is dialed in, the focus is there. Um, and then when the whistle blows, then it's, it's, it's about the guys enjoying their football, communicating, compete in the right way. Um, and, and, and again, for as much as it, it it's, it's not ideal to have some of your best attackers available or your defenders available. I feel quite good that the group that's out there will make up the percentages for those guys. It'll look different. It might feel different. But the commitment to the group is, is the most important thing, and I think that we'll get that at the weekend. Awesome. Thank you. One, one more thing. One <clears throat> total wild card in all this, based on health, which you can't know this early in the week, um, you've seen him train for a while. And like, who is Lambert? What is he? What do you expect from him if he's got to be the guy? Uh, I, I think Lambert came at a real tricky time. You know, his his primary position, the position that he plays with uh, uh, Jamaica, is has been a defensive midfielder, and uh, you know, but they also play with two eights, and so there's a lot of there's a lot of cover in there, um, and so when he came to us, we needed a a center back, and he's played that with um, the Phoenix Rising, his USL team. And so uh, from a place of necessity, he's been playing there since he got here. He hasn't played in the midfield for us once, uh, only because we have four or five midfielders and we need a center back. So um, I, I think it's not his primary position, but he's, he's, he's bright enough, he's experienced enough to go in and do a job. Um, and you know, I think he's shown over the course of three or four months that he's been with us that if needed, he, he can be a dependable player in that position. Going into this playoff run, what do you think the ceiling of this team is in this truncated tournament? Uh, that's, that's a good question. I, again, I, I think momentum is, is big going into this playoff. I think mindset is big. Um, I think if there's one thing we've seen, especially in the West, is the parity amongst teams. And so what separates any team on any given day it could be quality. Um, but for me, it's 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 – it's mindset, and, and I say that because you can go, you can get a lead, and you have to have a certain mindset to be able to now protect it, but still exploit the opportunities to score another one. You can go down a goal and, 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 and not cave and, and, and be prepared to find your moments to now attack and get back into the game. And I think that if there's one thing that we've shown this year as a group is that. Um, and, and I think when you're when you have that, you're prepared for most scenarios that you'll encounter from a competitive standpoint. Um, and, and I think that, that bodes well for our group. Um, and, you know, and then just going back to the, the last two years in the playoffs, even in Austin last year where we were down a man for, you know, 70 minutes, it wasn't until injury time where, you know, Austin tied the game. And so I think the, the mindset of a group is, is critical going into this this playoff format and how highs are ceiling, you know, I, I think if we can, you know, get past the first round in, in a in a in a good way, I don't think too many teams want to play a group that like we have that will never quit, that will keep going, that has great quality, and that has had a a really good campaign. I, I think 
I wouldn't want to play a group like that. Thanks, Pablo. Thanks. All right, team. Thank you.